6.6 is Cartesian vectors in R2. So you might be saying what happened to 6.5. Well, we're going to leave that for later because um, a lot of teachers do it this way where they just uh, focus on R2 and come back to R3 later. Um, R3 is just basically a three-dimensional plane. So we try to keep it as simple as possible. We'll do the R2 plane, which is just a basic XY plane that you're familiar with. And uh, we'll look at the three-dimensional ones a bit later. So the plan is to do Cartesian vectors in R2, and then I will cover some of the applications in R2, uh, forces, velocity, a chandelier hanging, that sort of thing, and then come back to R3 and do those all together. So suppose AB is any vector on the plane with endpoints AB. So I've drawn one way down here, I think. That's far enough down. Okay, so from A to B. So here's my my two points, A and B, on a Cartesian plane. And AB could be the vector AB. So AB is a Cartesian vector because its endpoints can be defined using Cartesian coordinates. So if you have coordinates on the plane, you can make a Cartesian vector out of anything. So if we translate vector AB so that its tail, so it should have a little arrow up here. This is the head. So the tail as is at the origin. Then we call it a position vector. And this is something that you're going to do a lot of. You want to find position vectors because it makes some of the other calculations much easier. So we would call that OP. And it would have coordinates, um, not co yeah, coordinates AB. And so it would be OP vector is AB. And then you can find the magnitude very easily by just taking the square root of the sum of the squares using Pythagorean theorem. So let's take a look again at this one here. So if we had this vector AB and I wanted to position it, you could see that if I'm at minus 4 here and I'm going to minus 1, then this distance from here to here is just 3 units. So 1, 2, 3, I'm to here. And this would be my coordinate A on the point P, A, B. So the height goes from minus 2 to plus 2. So minus 2 to plus 2 is 4 units. So that brings me up to here. So the um, vector, the position vector, O, P, would be, oops, that's not very straight, but we can just put an arrow on the end and make it straight. So this is point A, B. And in this case, the vector OP, let's say OP would be equal to, and we would have 3, 4. Now, some textbooks use square brackets when you're defining a vector. Um, you might find sometimes I do that because I'm used to doing that. Your textbook just uses the round brackets and... Um, you would know the difference because if it just said P like this, you would know it as a point. And if it has the arrow over um, to like OP like this, and you'd know it would be the vector OP. Okay, so that's how we're going to define a position vector. And how do you find a position vector without doing all this, like just measuring it? So all you have to do is subtract. And in this case, if you're finding the vector a, b, it is very important to do it in the correct order, and that is to subtract your b coordinate minus the a coordinate. So in this case here, if I wanted to find the x coordinate here, I would do minus 1, minus, minus 4. So minus 1, oh, I could have put that there, 1 minus, minus 4, and the y coordinate is going to be 2 minus minus 2. Okay, so that's how you do it. So a, b, do b minus a, whatever it is. And you would end up with what we figured out just by, um, just by inspection here, right? We said it's 3 across, 4 up. So if I took put it to the origin, I would go over 3 and then up 4. So again, the order is important. So we can write in general terms that vector AB is going to be x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1, and we're going to be doing B minus A.
So if I was doing vector C, D, I would do D minus C. So once I have this, you're often asked to find the magnitude. Now the magnitude of this line, if you think back to grade 10 math, that's the length of the line segment. And you may have remembered this lovely little equation, length of a line segment. So you had x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. But because we've put it into position, our x1, y1 values are zero. So the magnitude of our vector, so the magnitude of AB is just going to be the square root of the coordinates. So I'm just going to do the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared because, like I said, these would be zeros, right? So you'd have 3 minus 0, 4 minus 0. So you don't have to worry about those. And we get the square root of 25, which of course is 5. So that's the magnitude of AB. Okay, so that's not too difficult, right? Okay, so um, you have some homework questions, number 9. Um, I'm not sure this one is actually from it, but it's a, a like question. So it says determine the components of the related position vector. In other words, find the position vector and find its magnitude. So this is just what I just did for you, but a little extra practice. So I'm doing CD, vector CD is going to be, and I'm going to do 3, so I do D minus C. So don't forget your negatives. We've got a 3 minus a minus 5, and we have a minus 4 minus 7. So I get vector CD is 8 and negative 11. Now if I want to find the magnitude of that, very simple, nice easy work for you. So all I have to do is the square root of the squared the squares, the sum of the squares of the coordinates. So that's um, 64 and 121. And that's going to be the square root of 185, which um, you might have to approximate here. So it's approximately 13.6. So that would be the magnitude. Okay, so the next topic in this section is what we call standard basis vectors. This is really quite simple because what we're talking about here are the unit vectors that we talked about previously, which have a length of one. So vector i here would be, this would be vector i right here. It's one unit on the x-axis. Notice the coordinates, x is one, y is zero, and j is going to be zero, one. So here's my unit vector j. So standard basis vectors, unit vectors on the xy axis, we're talking about the same thing here. So if I took, um, if I wanted to talk about 3i, let's see if I can get a different color here. So if I did 3i, I would go like this, right? One, two, three i's. So this would be three vector i's. And if I did um, two vector j's, I would just be going up like this. So this could be two vector j's. And so the coordinate of this point here would be 3, 2, because I went over 3 up 2. They're very basic. And um, that would be my position vector could be 3, 2. Okay, so... If I said I have OA, and because it says OA, that means it's it's a position vector already because the O designates that it's coming from the origin. So if OA is 5 minus 7, and I asked you to write it in basis vectors, you would say, well, that's the same thing as 5i minus 7j. And you don't put it in brackets, it's just telling you directions. You go 5i minus 7j. And conversely, if I give you, if I say vector OB is 3i minus 6j, that's the same as saying vector B is 3 minus 6. Because these are just ones, right? So it's just telling you you're on the x-axis, you're on the y-axis, 
and this would give you your um, vector in component form, whereas this is in um, standard basis form. Okay, so it's not it's not anything very fancy. It's just a different way of writing it. Okay, so let's take a look at this little exercise here. It says if you have um, if you have a is ab and vector OD, so this would be vector OA, vector OD. So these are position vectors, and I want to add them together. All I have to do is add the x coordinates and add the y coordinates. So that, that might be a little easier than, um, you know, if you have the coordinates, it's very easy to find the sum of the, of the coordinates, right? It's not like when you had to do previously in the other exercise where you had to find the magnitude and you only knew the, the magnitude of these. So this is using coordinates now to give us the third point. So vector OC is simply OA plus OD and all you do is add the x and y coordinates together. Hmm. Could it have been so easy? And here, um, I think you see this more in physics where they put them, uh, they use Cartesian coordinates. So here, if I have um, OP, which is AB, and I do 2 times OP, then all I have to do is multiply. I will do 2A, 2B. So I just have to multiply them to get the next point. Or if I multiply by negative 1, I would have negative vector OP. So your coordinates would be minus A minus B. Pretty basic, isn't it? So the hardest question here in this exercise, and we'll get into much more difficult things in the next lesson when we talk about forces and some of the uh, trickier word problems. So hang on, be happy that things are easy right now. Okay, so if vector x is 2i minus 3j and vector y is minus 4i minus 3j, what is x plus y? Well, we can do it in standard basis using the i's and j's, or you could switch this over to being the coordinates, right? So I could say that vector x is equal to 2 minus 3, and vector j is minus 4 minus 3. And if I wanted to add them together, vector x plus vector Oh, so it was y, not j. Vector y would be equal to, I just add them together, 2 plus minus 4 is minus 2, and minus 3 minus 3 is minus 6. So that's switching it over to like getting rid of these little unit things. Or if I kept the unit parts, I would just say, well, it's the same thing, only I just leave them in there. I leave them in the calculation. So I would say, this is 2i minus 4i, comma, and then I would have, oh no, I don't need a comma there, sorry, 2i minus 4i, and then I'm thinking coordinates here. Um, I have minus 3j minus 3j. So that gives me minus 2i minus 6j, which of course is the same thing as this over here, right? They're the same thing. And what is the magnitude? So the magnitude of x plus y, vectors x plus vector y, is going to be equal to the square root. You're going to do this so many times, you're going to get very good at, at um, this little formula. All you're doing is adding the squares and taking the square root. Don't forget to take the square root in the end. So I have 4 and, 16, uh, 4 and 36, square root 40. And that would be the same as uh, 2 root 10. Right? Remember, so this is, I'll just write that out here. This is the square root of 4 times the square root of 10. Square root of 4 is 2, just in case you forgot how to work with those. So 2 root 10. And that's all there is in 6.6. .6. And again, this is a pretty easy lesson, short, sweet. and um, But still, at the same time, there's some basic understanding and terminology that you need to get used to. And I think that's why they kind of stretched it out. So in the next lesson, we'll start some of the applications.
and we'll see you in, that would be chapter 7.1.